Hi, so today I'm going to tell you about the work we're doing in the Kelch Lab at UMass Medical School, where we're trying to stop evolution in its tracks so that we can find new antibiotics to save lives. Now you might ask yourself, why do we need new antibiotics? Well, drug-resistant bacteria are a huge and impending problem. Just to give you context, as you all know, over the first year and a half of the COVID-19 pandemic, approximately 3.9 million people have died from COVID worldwide. The picture I'm showing here is one of the horrific mass graves that have been hastily put in place in Brazil for all the people who have been rapidly killed by COVID-19. Now, just to give you context about the impending disaster of antibiotic resistance, by the year 2050, it's expected that antibiotic resistant bacteria will kill 10 million people per year. That's the equivalent of two and a half COVID-19 pandemics every year, all from antibiotic resistant bacteria. This is a slow moving and imminent disaster. Now you may say to yourself, why not just make new antibiotics? That's a great question. After all, we've been successfully making new antibiotics since the 1930s. But as you can see here in this graph, new antibiotics have been very hard to make recently. We were making new antibiotics quite well up until the 1980s, and then abruptly we hit a wall. All of a sudden, new antibiotics were becoming much, much more difficult to create. Now, why is it difficult to create new antibiotics? It's for two main reasons. First, the current antibiotics we have only target a handful of processes in the bacterial cell. Current antibiotics block things like protein synthesis, cell wall synthesis, or mRNA synthesis. We actually have very limited classes of antibiotics. The second reason is that bacteria have managed to develop resistance rapidly against all the new antibiotics that we come up with. So the limited classes of antibiotics mean that the bacteria are way ahead of us in terms of evolving resistance against the new antibiotics that we develop. And bacteria are evolving resistance quicker and quicker. So that by the time a new antibiotic becomes available for public use, within a short time, the bacteria have outsmarted the, the antibiotic and moved on. So one of the things that we aim to do in the Kelch lab is first find a new process to target and second, prevent the evolution of antibiotic resistance. The process that we want to target is the copying of DNA. And that is shown here in this movie. This Pixar style movie shows the copying of DNA in bacteria at the atomic scale. And as you can see, there are two copiers. These copiers called DNA polymerases are copying the DNA to turn one copy into two so that the bacterium can divide and spread. The copiers are sh shown in the movie are extraordinarily good. They hardly ever make mistakes. Both copies of DNA look exactly like the parent DNA. But the good copiers that are shown in that movie are not the only copiers that bacteria use. Most bacteria also have a lousy copier. Under normal growth conditions, bacteria use the good DNA copiers. And so what happens is the mother cell will divide and create two daughter cells. And by using the good copier, the DNA is faithfully replicated and you'll get two identical copies of the mother cell. The daughters will be clones of the mother cell. On the other hand, the lousy DNA copier, you could imagine being one of those old carbon copy papers that we used to use decades ago. And for anyone who has used those carbon copy papers, the replica is not perfect. There are mistakes and smudges and errors all over the place. The bacteria like to use these lousy copiers when they're under stress, such as when they're in the presence of an antibiotic. The reason they use a lousy copier is to purposefully make random mistakes all over their DNA, creating mutations. The bacteria actually want those mistakes in the hope that one of these mutations will be beneficial, helping them avoid the antibiotic. This is a sort of Hail Mary pass that the bacteria are throwing. Most of the mutations in the offspring will actually be harmful, which will kill most of the bacteria. But the bacteria are hedging their bets that one of these mutations will actually provide resistance against the antibiotic. And when one of these offspring randomly attains resistance against the antibiotic, then it can grow fine even in the presence of antibiotic and life goes back to normal. This lousy copier Hail Mary strategy is the way that the majority of bacteria evolve resistance to antibiotics. 
And so our aim is to block the lousy copier. If we create a molecule that can bind to the lousy copier and prevent it from working in the bacterium, then we can stop antibiotic resistance before it evolves. An inhibitor of the lousy copier would hinder evolution of antibiotic resistance. Another important thing is that in most bacteria, the lousy copier is important for disease. But the bacteria grow quite well without it. And what this means is that there's a low selective pressure for the bacterium to develop resistance against an inhibitor of the lousy copier. So an inhibitor of the lousy copier would actually allow the bacteria to grow in people, but the bacteria would not cause illness. And finally, in human cells, we don't use a DNA copier that is at all related to the lousy copier of bacteria. So if we find a drug that can block the lousy copier, it should potentially have less side effects because it is unlikely to block the DNA copiers that we need for our cells to divide. So how do we block the lousy copier? Our strategy is to first produce the lousy copying enzyme and then measure its copying activity in the test tube. To do that, we will use state-of-the-art fluorescence techniques for measuring, measuring copying of DNA. Once we have that in hand, then we will screen through thousands and thousands and thousands of compounds until we find one or more molecules that can block the lousy copier from functioning. Once we have that in hand, we will actually visualize in atomic detail how the molecule binds to and blocks the copier from working. Using that approach, we can then tweak the molecule so that it binds better and blocks the copier more effectively. To do this, we are going to use the world's most powerful microscope that is here at UMass Medical School. And using that technology, we will be able to see the individual atoms of both the copier and the drug while it's bound to the copier. This will allow us to improve our drugs, making them fit into the copier better. We will then visualize it again using that fancy microscope and improve the drug further. So by combining these two strategies in an iterative fashion, we can rapidly develop a drug that prevents the lousy copier from allowing bacteria to evolve resistance to antibiotics. So let's go make some new anti-evolution antibiotics.